Hey, how's it going, everyone? I am Dan Lamar, CFP professional with United Wealth Management, where we specialize in PR management and financial planning for you pilots at United Airlines. And like many of you, my business partner, Alan Beal, and I are both pilots for United. Welcome back to another video. Uh, my last video was about uh, looking and reviewing your peer app contribution settings because we're at the end of the year 2022 right now, and uh, the 2023 uh, pay cycle is not too far around the corner. So we just want to double check that, make sure that they're set up. Plus, we got the IRS limits raised, and we got a 5% pay raise. So that's what my last video was about, was just uh, kind of reviewing what the different types of uh, contribution settings are. And now this is getting into a little bit more of the strategy, which is the, how much you want to contribute to either create RHA spillover or avoid RHA spillover. That's kind of what we're talking about today. Hey, before we jump into it too far, uh, remember to subscribe, hit the bell icon so you know when new videos come out. And please share this video on the forums, on Facebook, wherever. Email it to your friends. Uh, like I always say, those who are not watching are the ones who probably need to watch it the most. So anyway, and I appreciate the uh, positive feedback. That goes a long way. Thank you uh, for doing that. So anyway, as we kind of go into this stuff, um, uh, I did the same video on RHG Spillover and kind of how it works. I did it a couple years ago, but this, uh, this year I'm using 2023 numbers. So if you're looking at this even a couple years down the road, uh, just keep in mind the concept should be the same. Numbers will probably be a little bit different uh, unless the you know laws have changed or whatever, but uh, the concept should be the same. I'm going to talk briefly about what the active HRA and what the RHA are, is, what the RHA is, just a uh, uh, quick review on those things, um, how it's funded, and then how we can uh, create uh, contributions uh, to uh, create excessive spillover in there. And then on my next video is I will have some. Uh, uh, examples. I've got a graphical calculator. It kind of shows graphically how these uh, contributions add up throughout the year and when they change types and stuff like that. Next video, I'm going to have a couple examples of that. So anyway, let's get going. Let's do a quick review. Active HRA versus the RHA. Uh, what they are both for is they both can reimburse uh, qualified medical expenses. Uh, the active one is while you're an active pilot, and the RHA, which is the uh, retiree health account, it's for your retired pilot. So it's pretty much that simple. That's the big difference. The big, uh, great common advantage they both have is they're both triple tax-free. Money goes in tax-free, goes tax-free, and comes out tax-free when used for qualified medical expenses. The one thing I want to emphasize real quick, because uh, there's a lot of confusion on these alphabet soups of different retirement accounts, different uh, health accounts, is neither one of these is an HSA. So an HSA is its own separate breed of health account. And so a lot of people want to refer to these generically as an HSA. And when you do that, it really confuses the subject uh, because it's its own separate animal. We don't have spillover into the HSA and uh, uh, so on and so forth. So anyway, just a quick uh, review of what that is. Uh, and then the flex spending account is what we can set up during annual um, enrollment. Uh, you contribute your own money to that, and then that is where the expenses have to be incurred during the plan year, uh, or you lose that money. That's a user to lose it again. Anyway, just want to make a quick overview of what those are about. This is the way the RHA and the HRA are funded. First of all, if to, ha to have an active HRA, you have to be enrolled in a United Health plan. Um, if you're not, money goes right into the RHA. But they're funded the same way, so everybody's funded $1 per hour of pay. If you fly or get paid a thousand dollars in a year, a uh, thousand hours in a year, then you're getting a thousand dollars contributed in uh, into that over the year. Uh, and then peer app spillage, that's what we're talking about in this video. You can forfeit vacation, that's going to get some money in there. And then there's a compensation limit that will get money in there. So this is the way it's funded. A pilot cannot make direct contributions into the uh, active HRA or RHA. This is the way we do it. Cannot make direct contributions, but we can do things to manipulate or front load or minimize uh, PRAP spillover. And this is kind of what we're talking about to the lead on uh, kind of the strategy of how you want to make your contributions um, for 2023. So money goes in every January. I think it's over $15,000. Uh, money gets uh, transferred into the RHA. And then anything over $5,000 in June goes into RHA. And the reason we, they do that is because the RHA is invested for the long-term growth. The active HRA is basically in short-term uh, uh, money market type, uh, type stuff. So it can be spent right away. Uh, the reason they do that is, uh, you know, you don't want a, a young... Uh, new hire, someone who's 30 years old, you don't want money sitting in a money market account for 30 years. So they transfer it over there twice a year and it uh, and it gets invested. If you're not in a United uh, Health Plan, you don't have an active HRA. 
funded the exact same way into the RHA. It just skips the process of going through the active HRA uh, into the uh, RHA. Uh, reviewing the contributions here as we make contributions throughout the year. This is kind of getting to the strategy of it. Uh, pilot contributions go in either pre-tax or Roth. They come up against these, uh, go up to these limits, uh, 30000 and twenty-two five, depending on what your uh, age is. United contributions are going in there. And again, they're kind of working up toward these uh, upper limits as the year goes on. Once the uh, pre-tax or Roth limits gets reached, you can then make post-tax contributions. And so what that is end up doing, if you want to, if you're trying to maximize RIT spillover, you want to make these contributions fairly aggressive uh, in the first part of the year. And when I say fairly aggressive, you know, 20, 25 percent. And again, some it's really going to depend on what your uh, uh, pay scale is and how much you're flying and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, the whole idea, if you're trying to maximize it, you want to fill these buckets up. You want to fill this whole thing up as early in the year as possible. So if you got these ones done in the first couple months and then you're making post-tax contributions, you can see here pretty sizable, large, pretty sizable post-tax contributions to start to fill this thing up. And what you're ultimately doing is you're kind of minimizing the amount that United can put into the PRAP. Because ultimately, once it is full, all the contributions to the PRAP uh, cut off and then United contributions, that's the 16%, uh, they all spill into the uh, active HRA or the RHA. So that's the essence of a spillover and that's really how it works. And again, if you're trying to maximize spillover, you want to make these contributions as early in the year and as aggressively as you can, as your cash flow uh, will allow. In my next video, I'm going to have some, uh, I've got a graphical calculator that I use to show uh, clients um, what uh, uh, what it looks like, what these contributions look like, and when these limits get reached uh, throughout the year. So I'll have another, I'm going to run a couple examples of that on my next video. Um, so anyway, uh, if besides the spillover, again, the annual compensation limit, I'm not going to go into real deep on this, but anyway, annual compensation above $330,000, it's not, it cannot be considered uh, for contribution to a 401k. And so, um, and so uh, the company has to put that, uh, uh, they still are obligated to a 16% contribution somewhere. And so what they do is they take that 16%, which is above $330,000, and they put it into the active HR or the RHA. That's another way it gets funded. So an example, $350,000, you've got 20% above the limit, 16% of that's $3,200 that would be funded into it. So just to kind of give you a... Uh, uh, another way to uh, that 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 there is money going in there. Uh, anyway, if you're on the lower end of the pay scale, uh, lower end or mid pay scale, you got to make pretty pretty hefty contributions before you're going to get uh, any spillover. Uh, again, you're going to be funded one dollar per hour of pay uh, throughout the year, so it, it takes a little while for the active HRA the RHA to accumulate. So we just kind of keep that in mind. It can be done, kind of depending on where you sit on the uh, on, on the pay scale spectrum. Uh, but uh, it takes fairly aggressive contributions uh, to get much uh, uh, to get any spillover in there whatsoever. But uh, uh, I would say even on the mid part of the pay scale, I would say you're probably looking at a, a minimum of twenty percent, uh, probably more like twenty five percent in both pre tax and a Roth. Um, and plus post-tax contributions. So I'm going to run some examples of that on my next video just so you can see that. And again, I'm going to use a graphical calculator so you kind of see how they fill up throughout the year. If you want to minimize spillover, so um, some folks want to minimize spillover because they got uh, military retirements, uh, military TRICARE, and so on and so forth. So the expectation is that retire, uh, their health care health, health bills will not be as, as great in retirement. Um, and then, of course, the you know the the big catch with all this is that uh, it's not an inheritable asset. So that's why some would say, "Hey, I want to uh, you know I don't want to have quite as much in there." So if you do want to minimize it, um, uh, you know you're going to get spillover in there once compensation is above three hundred thirty thousand dollars anyway. So so some would say, "Hey, look, I don't want any more than I have to go in there. How it's the maximum amount I can contribute without creating additional spillover." So if you look at 16% of this maximum amount, that means uh, United can only put in 52.8 uh, before uh, uh, before the compensation uh, spillover starts to happen, which means there leaves additional room in there. So we take the different limits at 66,000 minus 52.8. Person under 50 could put uh, up to $13,200 in there. 
uh, without creating additional spiller. You always got the uh, <coughs> the ketchup contribution of seventy five hundred dollars in there if you're over fifty. So that person could put a uh, twenty thousand seven hundred dollars in there throughout the year. Uh, it, up to that amount without creating an additional spillover. So um, anyway, one one way to so just kind of keep that in mind, I encourage everyone to kind of run their own math to make sure that is uh, what's happening for you. But uh, <clears throat> but I'll run some examples of that too on the next video. Uh, so anyway, one technique is, as far as doing that is on the Peer App website, you can elect either percentages or dollar amounts that go in there. It might be a little bit easier just to calculate how much you want per month in a dollar amount rather than a, a percentage amount. That might be one way to, uh, to do it. That's just a technique there. The other thing you might consider doing, this is completely disregarding the tax argument of which is uh, you know, higher taxes now versus lower taxes later, you know, Roth versus pre-tax. But uh, one consideration would be make Roth contributions because at least that way, the nominal amount going in there is the same. Uh, you're paying taxes on that up front right now this year. In a way, you're kind of, quote unquote, saving that additional amount. Uh, because when it comes out in retirement, then you're going to have more of it. It's, it's all yours, or you're not paying taxes later on. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a workaround. But again, it's completely disregarding uh, tax considerations as to current versus future tax rates. Um, if you're going to minimize spillover, if your income is less than three hundred thirty thousand um, dollars, then you pretty much have to uh, just run the math and kind of see where your contributions are going to fall. And uh, once again. I'll, use, I'll, I'll do an example of that on my next video using that calculator. I think it'll start to make more sense. Uh, but you run the math based on your pay rate, your contribution, you know, kind of figure out what your contribution is based on your pay rate, your hours per month, and uh, if you're going to forfeit any vacation in there. So, hey, that's a quick overview. Um, I hope that kind of makes sense, uh, strategizing what your peer rep contributions are going to be instead of just talking about what they are, kind of an overview of either to uh, maximize spillover or minimize spillover, whichever cases, whichever one's going to work best for you. Um, and then, like I said, on my next video is I'm going to have a, uh, I've got a graphical calculator that, um, that I will do some examples on, as you can kind of see here, uh, this is what I do is I can put different numbers in here and you kind of see how they change and fill up throughout the year based on what your contributions are and what your spillover is going to be and stuff like that. So I'll just uh, run a couple examples of that. But don't want to do it on this one. I'm trying to keep these to, uh, these videos to an acceptable length. So anyway, hey, appreciate you tuning in. And until next time, fly safe.